Ruslan Makachev must have the most incredible squeeze. His, his squeeze must be out of this world. Because you see how quick Charles tapped once he clamped that on him. I mean, poof, that dude is on another level. He's been able to dominate these guys with one facet of his mixed martial arts game. You haven't had to see him strike because he's been so dominant with the wrestling and the grappling. Say to my guys, like everybody, there is levels. There is fighters, there is champion, there is elite. And uh, I think Islam is elite. This yeah. is what I think. This is what I feel when I train with him long time. From the mountains of Dagestan, Islam Makachev has emerged a force to be reckoned with. With victories over some of UFC's top contenders, Islam stands at the top of the lightweight division following the footsteps of his mentor Khabib Nurmagomedov and fulfilling father's plan. Set to defend his title against the fierce opponent, the diamond Dustin Poirier, let's look back at some of Islam's most notable victories. Coming in at number 5, Bobby Green. With Islam, he does what he does, but to be honest, it's kind of boring. You know, even if he getting finishes, it's still been boring. And so, my whole, whole thing is entertainment, excitement, you know. Um, so he can be championship material, but it's just fucking boring. Nobody wants to see it. Nobody cares. I fall asleep watching this fight. On Feb 26, 2022, Dagestani Phenom had racked up enough wins to earn the respect of UFC CEO Dana White and was waiting for a top 5 contender, if not a title shot. Unfortunately, it didn't come to fruition and instead a short notice bout was set up with the American Bobby Green, replacing Benil Dariush. Despite Islam being a clear favourite, Green didn't shy away from his usual trash talk and was confident and dismissed Islam as a threat. I think I definitely am the ace in the hold, you know, I'm definitely the, the wild card, the joker, you know, um, so I don't think he's seen anything like me, it's going to be definitely different. I don't know why, but I just feel like, I don't think he's going to make it, I think he's going to start getting hit, and he hasn't been hit, like, like I'm going to hit him, you know, and nobody says, like, nobody thinks it's hard, but every person you look at them when they come out fights with me, they're busted up, they're busted. And I know that it crosses their mind, like, I wanted to get out of here. This is a five-rounder. You can't get out of here now. He's going to get hit a whole bunch. On the other end, Islam remained calm and collected and gave us a glimpse into how the fight would pan out. I talk inside the cage. I'm going to take him down and tell him, hey, let's go, get out. No, I think it's dope. Yeah, say what you got to say, brother. You know, nobody holding you from back from your words. Say what you say. You are kind of stealing from your, your, big, your big brother, Khabib. That was his shit, you know, so... You're still, you're jocking his swag. Um, if he wants to talk, let's talk, you know, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. That's all I want to do is make sure that it's fun. Well, what is the saying? Fuck around and find out? Well, that's exactly what happened to Bobby. He was handed a free ass whooping and was finished on the three and a half minutes in the first round by TKO. At number four. Dan Hooker. Full of confidence after bouncing back from a loss to Dustin Poirier and Michael Chandler, the young prospect from New Zealand, Dan Hooker was given an opportunity to test his skill against the steam train that is Islam Makachev. Dan Hooker represented a typical young and cocky fighter who is not only able to yap but can also show some in the octagon. Though he accepted this fight on short notice as well as due to RDA pulling out, Hooker was in good shape as he had recently beat Nasrat Hakparas. Nah, I can be him. I can be him. That's um, that's like a fact. Oh, that's like how I'd prefer the fight to go is to like not catch him in a submission, not catch him with a knee or anything like that, and beat him. Like I feel like that, that above over, like snatching his neck or, or or catching him with a knee is like will make me feel better on the inside, give me a warm feeling in my belly, just to like prove everyone that will really shut everyone up if you just go in there and outclass him. Like then. 
then what's everyone going to say? You know what I mean? Like go out there and, and prove where your grappling lies in the division and make them look a bit silly. Like that's that's like my intention and like my plan for the fight. Um, Hooker was right. Not that Islam can finish you with ground and pound, but the fact that he's truly master of his craft when it comes to applying pressure on his opponents. It's a lesson that Dan Hooker learned the hard way. With Makachev squashing the New Zealander in the first round, nearly ripping his arm up via Kimura, the victory taking Islam one step closer to UFC gold. Number 3, Armin Sarukian. Probably the toughest fight of Islam's career came against Armin Sarukian. Armin, who is currently waiting for a rematch and a shot at the title, faced the bullet Islam Makachev on his debut. The game plan for the Armenian was clear, get the win. The plan for the fight is to win, that's my tactic of course. We will work based on what's happening in the fight and we won't see how things go down. There will be a lot of wrestling and striking, I mean it won't be boring like wrestling, wrestling, wrestling and that's it. Like there's going to be everything, a complete MMA fight. I will utilize everything if I don't succeed with wrestling, I will fight on the feet. If striking doesn't work, I will take the fight to the ground. If I fail on the ground, I will lay down there and try something. We won't forget to mention that this fight was quite risky for Islam as well, at least because it had been 9 months since he had stepped into the octagon. Many fans from the post-Soviet country saw Armin as a threat that could only potentially be competitive against Makachev after his layoff. Well, I was bothered by the fact that they were not giving me an opponent. First of all, they did not give me a top level fighter. And secondly, I couldn't find any opponent. And the month of Ramadan was right around the corner. I had been in great shape since December. In January, I was in a fight ready condition. Despite the speculations of the fans before the fight, Islam passed the test with flying colors. The guy went through three competitive rounds, which deserved the fight of the night award. And because Makachev had more versatile arsenal, Due to his experience, he snatched a convincing victory by unanimous decision to move further. At number 2, Charles Oliveira. We have perhaps the most triumphant and remarkable night in the professional career of our hero. By October of 2022, the Dagestani prospect was on a streak of 10 convincing victories and was rushing like a freight train at full speed to the championship fight. He hadn't lost in more than 7 years and if we don't count for that slip, in the fight against Adriano Martinez, Makachev could be considered undefeated. Either way, the latest victory over Bobby Green finally put him against the Bronx at UFC 280, who wiped out all the elites in the division. Uh, I don't know. He's have good striking now. He's improved his uh, Muay Thai, like, but in the ground, in the wrestling, he's not my level because I compete with many, many guys in the gym, like grappling guys, wrestling guys, because, I, you know, I saw his fight, many fights. He's, he's grappling, not dangerous. This is the guy scared you? Know, you think he's because, scared Of course, of course, he tried to, he tried to like, he say Islam have to fight one more time or something like this. But you see, tell him, hey, if you're not, uh, take this fight, we're gonna give some uh, chance to Michael Chandler. That's why he he take this fight. You know? The cage is close, he's gonna understand, you know. He gonna understand my my power, my wrestling skills and I'm gonna be ready every doesn't Islam didn't shy away from making statements leading up to the fight. Many criticized Islam's resume, saying he hadn't fought any top five contenders. But that didn't bother the soon-to-be champ. One thing, when he fought for the title, who he beat before, or who he fight for the title, Michael Chandler, you guys talk about Dizor or not Dizor, but who beat this guy before the title fight? Let me know, please. Because he have record, the most finished in the UFC, I want to take this record, because I finished all my last opponents. That's why I always look it for the finish. And I know I'm gonna finish him because he always give up. I'm gonna do this again. My my style bad for him because you know he always pressure his opponent because nobody try to take him down. All these guys last his opponent scare his ground game, but this is he. I don't I don't care about his ground game because he tried to do something, but 
when someone would give him good defense or like I saw his couple fight was uh, Paul Felder and he, when he tried to choke him and uh, what happened he defends couple of time and this guy give up you know that's why I don't care about his grappling Islam Makhachev did everything he claimed before the bell down to the smallest detail. He backed up every single word when he said he was not afraid of working with the Brazilian on the ground. As he followed him down on the mat and finished him by an arm triangle in the third minute of the second round, becoming the undisputed lightweight champion of the world and beginning the new era of dominance. <laughs> At number one, Islam Makachev versus Alexander Volkanovsky 2. Where is the short guy? Where? Let's do it. Hey, the lightweight on the line, pound for pound, number one on the line. Let's do it. So, no doubt about it, the top spot totally goes to the latest clash of Islam Makachev when he took down one of the top fighters and the most badass MMA rep in recent years. Just a year ago, our Aussie champ was feeling on top of the world after the first fight with the Dagestani champ. To everyone's surprise, it not only went the distance but also seemed to tilt in Alex's favour by the end. The public went nuts with all sorts of speculations that Volkanovski might have won this clash. I show why I'm number one. They have to improve more. They have good striking, good wrestling, grappling skills. This is his area. But you like or you don't like, I am best fighter in the world right now. Thank you. I watched the fight anyway. I watched the fight and see what it was like. Um, I'm hearing that he uh, he was saying, uh, I heard a whisper, I could be wrong, that he was going back to his corner saying he wants a rematch because he thought he lost. So um, that's funny. Uh, I would jump on that. Rematch. <laughs> Short but strong. <laughs> Should we do it again? Yeah, of course. Good. Maybe Abu Dhabi. Yes. We deserve a in Abu Dhabi. My, my turn to get booed. <laughs> Initially, it seems that the first fight between these guys left more questions than answers. Just so you understand how powerful the public opinion was after the beating Alexander got, Islam was not put on the top of the pound for pound list. Sure, John Jones' return also contributed to that, but that's a whole different story. Either way, everybody knew that the rematch was just a matter of time. After a successful defense in the featherweight division, the Australian fighter expressed his desire to come back into the game as soon as possible and collide with the Dagestani. Once again, however, Makachev was unavailable due to him preparing for another clash with Charles Oliveira which was targeted for UFC 294 in October of 2023. Everything went its way until a certain moment. That, the Volkanovsky crew, I mean him and Israel, these guys are just absolute studs, man. He jumps in and, and he accepts the fight. Suddenly the Brazilian got a cut and pulled out of the event just with 12 days left of the tournament. Volkanovsky stated that he accepted the fight with a lightweight champion on short notice. The level of madness keeps on going now on 12 days notice and all that, it's like I'm sort of in the same position where a lot of people are going to be, there's no way, you know, short notice, he's crazy. So um, I guess it's an opportunity. A lot of people uh, won't do these things, but uh, yeah, would I prefer a better camp? Of course, everyone would. Yeah, everyone, you know uh, what I'm like with my preparation, I like to make sure, but I'm the man for the job. If anyone can do it, if anyone can do this on 12 days notice, off the couch, as they would say, it's me, and uh, I get to go and shock the world uh, in how many days? 11 days or something like that, so it's pretty crazy. If anyone can do five rounds, literally at this notice, it's me. Like, I can do five rounds any day of the year, no matter how much time I have off. I can have the whole year off, I guarantee you I'll get through the five rounds. And I'll still be competitive with anyone, in, any man in the world. Um, I am that guy that can do that.
He's like, he needs he's, all the advantages he can get. That's all he thinks about. I don't need none of that. I've got these. That's all I worry you about. You don't mate. need. I need this, brother. I rely on my skills, not crowds, not nothing. Everybody know what you need. Just money. That's it. For Islam Makachev, it didn't really matter who he fought. He had reached such a level where he can make these spontaneous decisions. With less than two weeks before the title defense, in fact, the risk paid off, but only for the Dagestani champion, who completely destroyed the great one, knocking him out in the middle of the first round. Yeah, I'm a dangerous. Now, people, maybe some people underestimated my striking, but I told, I can strike with anyone. This guy, one of the best striker in the UFC, and I just show my level, you know. I am not just wrestler, I am not just grappler. I always training. I am an MMA fighter. And people have to know, I am the best MMA fighter in the world right now.